Hello and welcome back to the channel. In today's video I'm going to be doing a walkthrough of the 2023 reading paper. This is last year's reading paper and it was a tricky one. So I'm going to be doing this in three parts as there are three texts involved and I'm going to start with A Noise in the Night which is the first text. So when are the reading uh, tests going to be taking place? Well the year six sats are going to be in May from May 13th to May 16th, not interrupted by the King's coronation this time. And you can see here that the reading paper will be Tuesday the 14th of May. Okay, so that's where a date that you're working towards if you're preparing your children for SATs this year. The questions are broken down into short answers, several line answers, longer answers and selected answers. Sometimes the children will need to write something, sometimes they'll need to draw lines or tick boxes, but there's a variety of different ways to answer the questions and you'll see through this walkthrough. So, smart for this particular paper was 24, um, and the full marks is 50, and um, the pass mark can change depending on the difficulty of the paper, and seeing as this was quite a difficult paper, the pass mark was lower than it has been in the past. So the first text is called A Noise in the Night. And what the children would need to do is they have an hour to read three texts. And what I say to them is you want to break it down so you're doing 20 minutes on each. But if you can get through the first one even quicker than 20 minutes, then that's good because it leaves you some time to check uh, your answers at the end. This particular text was about children who were on a camping trip and they heard a strange noise in the night. I'm not going to read the whole text to you, but I'm going to show you how you can find the answers to the questions using the text. Question number one then says, look at the first paragraph. How can you tell that Priya was feeling nervous? So we start off straight away with an inference question. This is content domain 2D, and it's looking for ways that we know that Priya, one of the girls in the text, is feeling nervous. So I'm looking for a feeling. Okay, now... What I also say to the children is look for keywords in the question that might help you. So here we're looking for the keyword Priya and we're going to go to the first bit of text. Another really good tip is that the first few questions are likely to be about the first part of the text. So straight away we can see Priya here. She woke up with a start. Her heart beating fast. What does that tell us? Um, Abby was still sleeping quietly beside her, but now she could see things inside the tent. She realized that the moon must have risen. She took a deep breath, trying to calm herself. Okay, so we can tell from this, okay, that she's nervous. The writer isn't telling us, it doesn't say Priya was nervous, but she's showing us that she's nervous by describing her feelings and what she's doing. So her heart was beating fast, she took a great breath, she was trying to calm herself. So if we go back to the question, okay, so we need to, to get these two marks, how can we tell that Priya was pre feeling nervous? So first of all, her heart was beating fast. And secondly, she tried to calm herself. So both of these would qualify as correct answers. Remember, it's a two mark question, so you need to make two different points. Number two, look at page four. Why did Priya find it surprising to hear two vehicles drive by? Straight away, we've got another inference question. I know it's an inference question because it's using this word why, and it's asking us to give a reason. It also helps us out a little bit here because it tells us to look on page four. So let's go back to page four and see if we can find the answer. So why was she surprised to hear two cars driving by? So I'm looking for those keywords again. Can I find two vehicles or two cars? Um, the sound died away, everything was quiet, but completely unreal. Okay, there was another sound, a deep throbbing, it was growing steadily louder. Okay, a car drove past. Okay, so now we think the answer is going to come up. Priya was surprised, and now she was completely awake. They had only seen a couple of cars all day, and now two had come past together. So she's surprised because 
They'd hardly seen any cars all day. They're in the middle of nowhere. So how is it that all of a sudden, in the middle of the night, there are two cars driving past? So what would our answer be? Well, it's a why question, so I'm going to use the word because in my answer. Because they had only seen a couple, a couple of cars all day. And that's all you would really need to write for that one mark. Okay, but that shows us that why was she surprised? Because, you know, she wasn't expecting to see any cars. It was the middle of the night and in the day they'd only seen two. So that's the reason. Question three. What made Priya realize that one of the vehicles was not a car? For this question, um, this question is actually a retrieval question. The first one on the test. So we should be able to just find the answer in the text. Key questions again in this, we've got um, vehicles and car. So we're looking for those key words and we should be able to find the answer. Let's have a look. Okay, so we go back to this part here where it's talking about the cars. And it says, although she thought about it, one of them must have been a truck or a tractor because its engine had sounded much too deep for a car. Okay. What made her realize that it was not a car? Because the engine sounded much too deep. And that gives us an answer that will be enough to get that mark. Okay, we've just managed to retrieve the answer from the text. It's been there. We can take it and we can write it down. Question number four. So question number four is a summarizing question. A summarizing question is asking the children to look at the a larger part of the text. And usually the questions look like this. They're asking the children to put events or things in chronological order. So it says, look at the power of beginning, the sound died away, to the paragraph ending the other side of the valley. So it tells us where to look, which helps because we don't have to look at the whole text. Number the following locations. All right, so locations, so looking for places. One to four to show the order in which Priya thought she heard the vehicles. Once again, we're looking for these keywords, vehicles, um, she heard the vehicles travel. So we need to order these. Okay, she heard these vehicles, but in what order? Let's go back to the text. Okay, so straight away, we need to look at this whole section. From here, to the other side of the valley, here. So this is the section we're looking at. All right, we're looking for locations, but which ones turned up first? All right, so it says, we scan through the text. A deep throbbing. Okay, car drove past the campsite. Right, campsite's the first location that I can see. So let's put a little number one there. Okay. Priya was surprised and I was completely awake. She's seen a couple of cars all day. Although now she thought about it, one of them must be a truck because it sounds too deep for a car. She looked at the bark, dark hump beside the Abby was asleep. She woke her, she could hear it and imagine the two cars. They were reaching the foot of the hill. So we've got foot of the hill. So that must be the second place. And the cross, and then crossing the bridge, we've got the third place by Greystone Farm, the fourth place. So it looks to me like if we were to put those locations in con chronological order. Oh, sorry, we've got here the cattle grid as well. So maybe that's the fourth place. We've got here, we've got one, the campsite, two, the foot of the hill, three, the bridge by the farm. And finally, the cattle grid, which would be four. Let's see if we can answer the question. So looking at the question, we can see that now we've looked in the text that uh, number one, they saw the, heard the trucks by the campsite. Two was the foot of the hill. Three was the bridge. And finally, four, the cattle grid. And that would give them a correct answer. Question number five. Look at page four. So again, it's telling us where to look. What made Priya decide to take a look, so this is in italics, which means it must be from the text, outside the tent. So we've got some key words we can look for. Take a look and tent. What was the reason that she took a look outside the tent? And we've got four options to choose from. But let's go back to the text and see what that part is saying. Okay, so now moving further down the text. For a while the sound didn't change and then quite suddenly it stopped. Priya wondered about that. 
Maybe they had stopped at the Jones's farm. Maybe the farm had been out visiting someone in the other valley. Whatever it was, she was going to take a look. So what prompted her to take a look? Well, it was because quite suddenly the vehicles stopped and the sound stopped, which meant the engines must have been turned off. And that's why she was so curious to see what was going on. So if we look at the options, she heard hedgehogs noises, definitely not this one. She heard Toby coughing. I didn't hear any mention of that. She heard the engine stop. We think this is the most likely option, but let's read the last one. She heard the noise from the road. So there is two here, okay, which is getting you to really think about because they're similar. But it's actually, we know clearly from the text that it was because she heard the engine stopped. So tick one and be careful. It usually says tick one, but I've seen children lose marks because they tick more than one. Number six, look at the last paragraph on page four. So again, it's telling us where to look. We know where to find the answer. How can you tell that the moonlight was very bright? So keywords in the question, we've got moonlight and we've got bright. Let's go back to the text. How can you tell the moonlight was bright? So we're looking at this final paragraph here. Very quietly, not to wake Abby, she unfastened the zip of the tent. She pulled back the flap and realized she could see the whole valley, blue and black and silver, in the moonlight. So how do you know the moonlight is very bright? Because she can see the whole valley. The moonlight's lighting up the whole valley. And she's able to see it. So back at the text, back at the answer, sorry. How can we tell? Again, we can use the word because in our answer because she could see the whole valley. Okay, so that gives us our answer. Look at the top of page five. Okay, so question seven. It's telling us where to look. Then it hit her, what is it? Now, this is a really tricky question because um, a lot of children got this question and I would say they got the right answer, but in the mark scheme, it wouldn't allow a certain thing. So let's see if we can find the answer. Look at the top of page five. Then it hit her. What was it? Then it hit her. So straight away we see that phrase. What does it say? Rustlers. Now, interestingly, in the mark scheme, it wouldn't accept the answer. Okay. It says, do not accept the rustlers, some rustlers. And I think that's quite harsh because it's, it tells us that it shows straight away afterwards where it is. But this question is actually a inference question. So the children are not allowed to just write rustlers. They have to be able to explain what it was or what, what rustlers basically are. So if we read on a little bit, what would the vehicle, why would they park in the lights? I she knew she was right. Okay. And further down, we can see that. It says, I think they're stealing sheep. So rustlers, therefore, must be thieves or people who come to the farms in the night and try to steal things. So we also need to say something like she had figured out they were rustlers there to steal sheep. And that would be a correct answer. They wouldn't accept just the rustlers, which I think is quite harsh. So let's put, she had realized they were rustlers there to steal sheep. And that shows that we really understand what she had realized, but also that rustlers are thieves that steal sheep. And that would make us be able to get that mark. Question eight. She wriggled back inside the tent. So we know that we're looking at this section of the text. What does this tell you about the way Priya got inside the tent? And we've got four options. Did she run quickly inside? Did she jump through the flap, squeeze in, crept quietly? This is one of those questions where you might not have to go back to the text to make a pretty good educated guess because the part of the text we would look at is right here. So if you wriggle back inside somewhere, if you imagine the tent is quite small as well, 
actually the most likely is that she had to squeeze in. But let's go back to the text and just double check. She wriggled back inside the tent, we can see it here, and shook Abby's shoulder, wake up, what's going on? So it doesn't really give us any further detail about what's going on and why did she have to squeeze in. So we have to infer that the tent, even from the picture here, we can see it's quite small. So I am going to say that she had to squeeze in and that would be a correct answer. Just looking at those four, it would be the most likely. Okay, question nine. You'd better not be making this up. Why does Abby say this to Priya? Well, we've got a why question, so it's inference. Now, why does she say that? Well, if you were getting woken up in the night, you'd be pretty annoyed as well. So she wants, so she's saying, you better not be making this up. Let's go back to the text. She is annoyed that she has been woken up in the night. So she said, you better not be making this up. Okay, so she's annoyed that, um, you know, she's been woken up and she was tired. So she was kind of grumpy. Again, this is an inference question. Because she was tired and annoyed, she had been woken up in the night. And that would be a correct answer for that question. Look at page five. So tell again, we're looking at a certain page. Write one piece of evidence that shows Abby was shocked by what she saw. So we need to go back to page five and have a look. So looking at this page, okay, we can see that down here, okay, she, Priya pointed and heard a sharp intake of breath from Abby. So while Abby was looking through the binoculars, she could see the rustlers and she had this sharp intake of breath, which shows, okay, it doesn't say Abby was surprised or shocked, but it shows the reader that that's what a person would do if they were shocked. So a correct answer would be Abby took a short intake of breath and that would get us a mark for that answer. Next question 11, look at the end of the extract. So again, it's telling us where to look. Why was Abby worried? Okay, so it's an inference question. We're gonna to have to write a reason. Okay, Abby was worried because she knew that the rustlers, okay, were there to harm the sheep or steal the sheep, okay, and she didn't want that to happen. So you're right, she breathed, those are Mr. Jones's sheep, we have to do something. Going back to our answer, Abby was worried that they were going to steal Mr. Jones's sheep. Okay. And the final question for this text is a true or false question. And um, I've always said to my children with these, be careful because some of it, some of the parts of this statement might be true but it might not all be true, so read it carefully. At the beginning of the story, Priya knew what had woken her up, and also go back to the text for each one of these just to be sure. Priya woke up with a start, her heart beating fast. Something had disturbed her, so at the beginning she doesn't know what it is. So that first one would be false. Priya knew what had woken her up, false. The binoculars belonged to Priya, Abby grunted and got the binoculars out of her bag. So the binoculars actually belonged to Abby, meaning that this second one is also false. Both Priya and Abby agreed that they had to do something. We have to do something, so both of them feel that way, so that one is true. And finally, the rustlers stopped in Priya and Abby's campsite. Now, did they stop in the campsite? Let's go back.
that they were on the other side of the valley. So I don't think that they stopped in their campsite. The rustlers had stopped on the other side of the pan of the campsite. So they weren't stopped in the campsite, but on the other side, making that last one false. Okay. So that is the end of the first text for the English reading paper from last year. I'll be doing two further videos on the two next texts. So please look out for those. If you want more videos on primary education, then please subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and give the video a like if you enjoyed it today. Thanks a lot, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.